Unicorns are real, and if you know where to look, you too can see them, just like I did. And I'll tell you exactly where to find them. I know that saying that probably torpedoes the credibility of what I'm about to say, but you have to understand that there's a very good reason why I'm keeping this information to myself. I'm sure that if you're clever, then you'll figure it out on your own. Or at least, you might be inclined to try. Please don't. The unicorns are real, and they are not to be disturbed. I'd known Marissa ever since I was a young boy. So we'd grown up together in The Hague. I know she could be difficult, she was very particular about what foods she would eat, where she would sleep, what products she would buy, and... She could be a demanding lover, but still, she had my heart. She knew that she was beautiful, and she did everything she could to keep that beauty. In the winter, we spent much of our time in the gym. I'll admit, I went primarily to admire her. She had a lovely body with shapely legs, firm abs, and the face of a model. If she'd wanted to, she could have made quite a bit of money off her beauty, but she had no interest in that. I didn't complain. In all her radiance, she was mine. And mine alone. In the summer months, our rigorous routine in the gym moved outside. We both enjoyed the outdoors far more than we enjoyed the gym. We'd hiked most trails in our area to the point where they'd become boring. Marissa came from a well-off family, and her father was happy to fund her excursions around Europe and Scandinavia. There was so much of the world to see, and Marissa wanted to see every inch of it. She wanted to dine in the most luxurious restaurants, to stand atop the great works of nature, and to conquer everything that there was to conquer. It was because of that that when she heard about the unicorn forest in the Ukraine, she could not resist it. Our friend Stefan ran the same circles as myself and Marissa, although he was a bit older than her. He too had a thirst for knowledge and exploration. I suppose he chalked himself up with names like Byron, Marco Polo, and Darwin as great figures in history, although in truth I doubt most people would have known his name. I'll admit, I never quite liked Stefan. His stories always seemed too large for life. And yet, Marissa clung to every word he said. We'd met up with him for lunch when he told us of the Fay Forest in Ukraine, where unicorns roam freely like they did in the old days. I truly felt that he lost his mind completely. Yet I could see Marissa's eyes widening. I knew she was entranced. Unicorns? She'd repeat. In the Ukraine? You're serious? Absolutely, Stefan said. We had a glimpse up there. He showed us where to go. The area is quite remote, but I could find it again. You wouldn't believe your eyes, Marissa. They're more beautiful than you could possibly imagine. Her eyes darted over to me. I don't think my disbelief really actually registered with her. Could you get us a map? Where did you see them? What do they look like? The excitement in her voice was cute. I won't lie, but I still disapproved of it. Stefan just smiled like nothing was wrong as he took out his phone. It's a bit north of Kiev, near the border where the Ukraine meets Russia. Belarus. He zoomed in closer to it. The forest he showed was closer to Belarus than to Russia, and on the map it looked unremarkable. It's a few days' hike. It's a round trip. But you will see them, I promise you, Stefan said. Marissa looked over to me, grinning wide from ear to ear. We have to go, Peter. We have to. Her mind was made up, but mine wasn't. I glanced over at Stefan, unsmiling. This all sounds a bit too... fantastical. Even for you, I said. You said you saw them yourself. Did you get any proof? Not as much as I would have liked, Stefan confessed. A few pictures, not the quality I would have liked. He opened the photo app on his phone to show us what he meant. I could see shapes amongst trees that resembled horses. As I scrolled through them, I only saw a few clear shots where I could see any horns. The pictures weren't the worst quality I had ever seen, but they didn't wow me. If Stefan was competent, he could have photoshopped them in an hour. I passed his photo back to him. That's part of why I'm meeting you here today, he admitted. I need to get back out there. I need to see them again. You two are good hikers. You can help me get in there with decent equipment to photograph them. We could show others that they're real. Imagine it. Proving the existence of unicorns. This all sounded like some child's fantasy to me. 
but I could hear the palpable excitement in Marissa's voice as she spoke. Peter, come on. Even if it's not real, it's a new trail. There's nothing to lose, is there? I suppose she was right. We'd hiked trails for a few days before, just for the fun of it. This wouldn't be that much different. And I knew I couldn't say no to her. Marissa was used to getting what she wanted, and her reaction when she didn't could be difficult to cope with. This was not a fight that I wanted to have with her. All right, I finally said. I suppose there's no harm in going. I didn't expect we'd see any unicorns, but if this would make Marissa happy, it was worth it. Perfect. Yes, thank you. I promise you won't be disappointed, Stefan said, ignorant of the fact that I could never not be disappointed in him. We departed for the Ukraine within the next few weeks. Stefan and Marissa had handled most of the travel arrangements. It was a couple of days' drive to the Ukraine from The Hague, but we made good time. Stefan took over the driving as we'd stopped for a night in Kiev. I sat in the back of the car listening as he shared overblown stories of his adventures with Marissa and waited for the ride to end. He'd been in the middle of recounting his famous luncheon with Madonna when we pulled onto a dirt road. The car rocked and shook as we continued up it. I looked out the window, seeing nothing but heavy trees on either side of us. The forest around us seemed strangely dark and lonesome. Something about it felt unwelcoming. You almost there? I asked. Close, Stefan replied. There's a clearing up ahead where we park. After that, we'll need to proceed on foot. I'll go over our route before then. There's a few landmarks we can use to get around. Oh, this is so exciting, Marissa chimed. She looked back at me, grinning wide from ear to ear. It was the most lovely smile I'd ever seen. Sure enough, Stefan had told the truth. There was a clearing up ahead where he parked the car, and afterwards we discussed our planned route, where we would head up north toward the large river. It would be about a day's hike. We'd follow the river upstream for about a day. Supposedly the unicorns live near the river. That's where we'd like to see them. After that, we head southeast, then a gradual incline that would take us close to the clearing. From then, we should have been able to find the car again. All in all, it was intended to be a three-day hike. Marissa and I had gone through far more extreme conditions, and if his tales were to be believed, so had Stefan. It seemed easy enough. When we finished our final checks, we gathered our supplies and set off into the woods. It was late morning, and the day loomed ahead of us. I couldn't shake the feeling the surrounding woods gave me, but I did try and convince myself that this really would be a good hike. It was nearing dusk when we reached the river. The water ran wild and the noises of it were soothing. Our day had been uneventful, but not unpleasant. As much as Stefan's ceaseless chatter annoyed me, I knew how to tune him out, like white noise. I stood on the riverbank, looking at the flowing water that shimmered orange in the dying sunlight. I could feel Marissa coming up beside me, her light blonde hair rustling gently in the wind. Her eyes were bright and drank in the sights before her as if it was all for her. It's beautiful, isn't it? I asked. Breathtaking, she replied. Should we get a picture? She didn't need to ask twice. I took my phone out of my pocket. We snapped a selfie with our back to the river, basked in the golden dusk. I still have it. I still remember Marissa's lovely smile. With the picture taken, she leaned in to kiss me on the cheek. Thank you for agreeing to come, she said softly. Well, even if we don't see any unicorns. It was worth it to see this, I replied. She playfully swatted me on the shoulder. We will. Stefan never lied to us yet, has he? I was pretty sure he had, but I kept that to myself. The next morning we set out early. As planned, we followed the river upstream. There was a bit of an incline, but I wouldn't call it a hill or a mountain, just raised in the landscape. The forest around us seemed far too quiet, quieter than it had been the day before for sure. The birds didn't chirp, I heard no small animals in the brush. Even Stefan was oddly quiet, although I wouldn't have complained about that. The only sound was that of the rushing water by our side. We walked for a few hours in silence, scanning the far side of the river. I saw nothing there save for more trees. It was Marissa who saw them first. Peter, she whispered. Her voice was sharp and drew me out of my own thoughts. I hadn't noticed that Stefan had suddenly gotten low to the ground and Marissa was bidding me to do the same. I got low and I peered out at the river. I didn't see anything out of place at first. The camera! Marissa said. Get the camera! 
Stefan was fumbling with a large camera that he brought with him. It was a more high-tech device, no doubt meant to capture more legitimate pictures of these creatures, but I still couldn't see anything. There! Marissa pointed at something on the far side of the river. And then... I saw it. It was almost invisible amongst the trees. Its fur had a mossy texture to it, but once I saw its outline, I would recognized it for what it was. The unicorn was taller than a normal horse. In fact, in fact, I'd say it was easily twice the size. Its fur was shaggy, which helped it hide amongst the trees. A tuft of mossy fur hung off its chin like a goat's beard, but the most prevalent feature of it was the single spiraled horn in the center of its head. That horn must have been as long as my arm. The unicorn seemed oblivious to our presence, and it wasn't long before I saw others joining it. The others weren't quite as large. I assumed a few of them were juveniles. I watched some of the larger ones move to the edge of the river before bending down to drink. Tavern's camera clicked. The unicorn looked up before dismissing the sound as nothing. You're beautiful, Marissa whispered. Peter, do you see? Do you see? I saw. And I was speechless. Stefan had been right. They were far more beautiful than I could describe. There was a surreal grace to them, like swans or uh, peacocks. They seemed almost regal in this place. There was no sound save for the water and the occasional huffs they gave off. I watched as the largest unicorn even submerged itself within the river and began to cross. Stefan snapped another picture of it as it got closer to us, but I, I watched the unicorn carefully. Should we be moving? I asked. Are they docile or? My guide last time said not to disturb them, Stefan whispered. They aren't used to encountering people. I heard they spook easily, part of why I couldn't get good pictures last time. The unicorn climbed up onto our riverbank and shook itself off. It looked back at the others of its group before entering our side of the woods. I saw a few more unicorns entering the water as well. Stefan snapped a few pictures of them before beginning to stand. Where the hell are you going? I asked. I'm going to try and find the big one, you know, get a better vantage point. You said don't disturb them. I'm not disturbing them. I just want to get more pictures. Then... Just like that, Stefan was off, and Marissa was following him. She glanced back at me, a gleam of excitement in her eyes before she vanished into the trees. I swore under my breath, and I went to follow her. I found Stefan a few feet away, crouched behind a log with his camera perched on top of it. The largest unicorn was just barely visible ahead of us. It stood guard as the others of its herd just joined it. There were a few others of its size that came first, followed by some juveniles. Stefan snapped his pictures, lining up each shot carefully before he took the photograph. As the camera clicked, I saw the largest unicorn look off in our direction. It seemed confused by the sudden sound. A juvenile had looked over as well, and I watched as it made its way closer to the log to investigate. Look, look, look! Marissa tapped Stefan on the shoulder to gesture to the oncoming baby unicorn. Stefan pointed his head out from behind the log, then aimed the camera at it. The unicorn continued its curious approach before stopping a few feet shy of the log. It flinched when Stefan snapped another picture, but didn't run. It just looked down at him as if trying to decide what to make of him. Marissa looked up in quiet awe. The unicorn was close enough to touch, and I saw her reaching out to do exactly that. Marissa, I warned. Be careful. She didn't respond. She just kept reaching out to it. The unicorn recoiled slightly, then sniffed at her hand. It tried to pull back, and she just had to touch it. Her hand brushed up against its neck. More of a tap, really. The unicorn trotted off just as she made contact, and Marissa looked back at me, eyes wide and wearing that smile I adored. I wasn't smiling back at her, though. Marissa, move! Her smile faded, only briefly, before she realized just what I'd seen. She must have felt the ground shaking as the largest unicorn broke into a sudden charge. We'd crossed a line and the unicorns were not happy. Marissa got clear of the log almost instantly. Stefan, however, did not. He tried to hastily scramble to his feet, his camera slipping out of his hands, and he bent down quickly to snatch it up. If I had time, I would have shouted for him to leave it. 
There was no time, though. It happened so fast. In mere seconds, the unicorn was at the log. Its head was bowed, and that ivory horn was pointed right at Stefan. He looked back at it the instant before it skewered him. The horn went through his neck, and I watched as the unicorn lifted him off the ground. It shook him violently, dashing his quivering limbs against the nearby trees. Tattered skin and broken muscles stretched and snapped. As Stefan's corpse fell free from the unicorn, but most of his head remained impaled on its horn. Run, I said. Marissa remained frozen in place. I seized her by the hand. Run! We took off at a sprint back the way we'd come. I could feel the ground quaking beneath us as the unicorn gave chase. Marissa's hand slipped from mine as she kept her pace with me. I could hear her frantically breathing. I could almost sense the fear radiating off of her, and I could hear the thundering hoofbeats of the unicorn. We couldn't outrun it. I could tell that it was gaining on us. We had mere minutes at best. My mind fired on all pistons, trying to think of a way out. And that's when I remembered the river. It was right there at our side. We could dive in and let the current carry us away. It wasn't a foolproof plan. It had more than its own share of dangers, but I liked our odds of survival in the river a lot more than I liked it against the unicorn. Here, I said, and reached out to grab Marissa's hand again. I tugged her towards me, but as I did, I felt her fall. I heard the snap of something in her leg as she hit the ground and nearly took me down with her. She cried out in pain, her hand gripped mine tightly. Behind us, I could see the unicorn advancing. It would be on us at any moment. Tears streamed down Marissa's face. She was terrified. And so was I, but I knew I didn't have time to drag her to the river. With one pull, I ripped my hand from her grasp. Peter! She cried. She tried to stand. She tried to follow as I ran to the river. Peter! Peter! Marissa's voice died in her throat, and I made the mistake of looking back as I reached the edge of the river. I saw her atop the head of the unicorn, its blood-covered horn protruding through her chest. I saw her eyes wide with mortal terror. I saw her mouth open in a silent scream of pain. Flecks of blood dotted the area around her mouth. The horn had gone completely through her. Her back was pressed against the head of the unicorn, and I saw it hoist her up, her limbs folding back against its skull. The unicorn's eyes fixed on me, and finally... Finally, I threw myself into the river. The rushing water dashed me against the rocks and fallen branches. It took me far away from my beautiful dead Marissa and towards salvation. I managed to pull myself to shore a few miles downstream, not far from a major road. I was battered, bruised, broken, and almost certainly half mad, but I, I was alive. My body was able to heal in time. I told the world that I fell into the river trying to rescue Stefan and Marissa. That's not the truth. No, I could have. I never could have saved Stefan. But maybe I could have saved Marissa. Maybe. There's no going back now. And what's done is done, and all I can do is give my warning. Do not fuck with unicorns. You will not survive. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Pasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video. And if you are interested in getting a nice, warm beverage while listening to Mr. Pasta's story time, you can always check out my wife's tea shop. It's etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. The ivory monocle tea shop has different kinds of teas from Dungeons and Dragons to anime to Final Fantasy to uh, creepypastas. <laughs> you can actually get a creepypasta tea set that features a Mr. Creepypasta tea. It's the tea that I generally have here at my desk as I'm recording. And you can actually request after you order one to get the special dabbing MCP sticker, which is the one that I use. And a very special thank you to everybody on that Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, especially Ariel Torres. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chumpinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Asia, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Kao, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Don Muehlmeister, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, 
The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Bobby Jean Torgan, Dr. Strawberry, The Wormhole, Barbara Macedo, and Vic. Thank you guys so much, and if anyone would like to join them on that list, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Here's hoping that you guys are loving the horror as much as I am. And sweet dreams.